And so we want to tap into this morning, are you trapped in a mind field, a mind field of evil imaginations? You know, the scripture says this, whatever is not of faith is sin. Whatever is not of faith is sin. Scripture says, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, it's sin. The scripture says in James chapter 1, it says that we deceive ourselves when we hear the word and don't do it. The Bible says in the words of Jesus, there was a wise man, he dug deep, built his house on a rock. There was a foolish guy that built his house on sand. He heard the word, didn't do it. Jesus explains to us how important it is to hear and to put into practice. To not only hear, but faith that has corresponding action. Faith without, faith without action is dead. It's really just a philosophy. It's just a thought. So I want you to think about that. Are you trapped in a mind field of evil imaginations? So let's think about that. The Bible says that in the book of Hebrews that the Israelites had an evil heart of unbelief. An evil heart of unbelief. The Bible says, don't let this same heart be in you. So there's a warning. And it tells us the importance of getting beyond this mental merry-go-round. Our minds are producing thoughts nonstop. Matter of fact, you're thinking right now while I'm talking. And so your mind has the ability to create thoughts and to regurgitate things that have been planted there? Are you trapped in a minefield of evil imaginations? Is it possible, posing a question, not establishing a doctrine, but posing a question, is it possible to have evil thoughts or evil imaginations and embracing them and entertaining them? You're supposed to entertain angels. But embracing evil thoughts, embracing evil imaginations, and enabling them to control the way you live. And if you embrace and enable an evil imagination, an evil imagination would be something contrary to the Word of God. Could that be, could that kind of tip over in the areas of what sin is? Entertaining something contrary to the Word of God. Entertaining and embracing it where because you entertain it and embrace it rather than casting it down and bringing it into captivity to the obedience of Christ, that that could be in the broad scope of being a sinful thought. Now, listen, there's one thing to be tempted. It's another thing to do it. It's one thing to have a thought. It's another thing to act it out. But is it possible that if you entertain these evil imaginations, that that would be the root of producing an action, which would be sin? Just a thought. Look at the person beside you and say, I'm just thinking. Every once in a while, we've got to think. So are you willing to face the mental monsters in your life? Think about that, a minefield. Paul said this, my grace, God said this to Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. Now Joseph had a dream. Some of you probably studied the book of Genesis and you know about Joseph who had a dream. He had a dream from God. How many of you would like to have a dream from God? I mean, God, just open your eyes. You see your plan, your purpose. You go, wow, so good to discover now finally why God has me on this planet. Uh, it's so good to now know that I get up every day with a purpose. But you know, Joseph had a dream from God. He's 17 years old, they say, and he had a dream from God. You'd think people would get real excited. You know, everybody's not excited about your dream from God. Matter of fact, uh, you, you get a dream from heaven, some people are going to hate. What haters do? Haters going to hate. You know why? That's what haters do. Haters that can't even help hating. They just hate, you know, the, un, the uh, tolerant crowd or the most intolerant group I've ever seen in my life. Haters going to hate. And uh, the root determines the fruit. So if haters hate, it tells you what's in their heart, doesn't it? Now, Joseph had a dream, shared it with his brothers. Everybody say blood. Blood's thicker than water. You know, somebody went to class. Uh, is, hey, Doc, is blood really thicker than water? Yeah, it is thicker than water, see? So that's a fact. Now, people say, well, you know, we're blood. I, I, you know what? Sometimes when you, when you really want to become who God wants you to be, you've got to be willing to get out of your family tree. Y'all remember back many, many years ago, somebody just be kind of whacked out like me, and they say, oh, man, that dude, he's just out of his tree. That was kind of a compliment. Uh, that was kind of an acknowledgement that you weren't just hanging around with the rest of the fruits you grew up with. 
Now, maybe you grew up in a nut house. I don't know. But Joseph had a dream, and you think as a young guy, he shared it with his brothers. They'd go, oh, little Bubba, that's so cool. That's great. We're so proud of you. God's giving you a dream right on. Did they? No, they hated him. The Bible says they hated him even more. Now, here's the idea behind all this. If you're going to be a person who's having an impact in the earth, you got to get beyond the haters. you got to get beyond what people think about you. Get over what think people think about you. Get over what people say about you, true or untrue. You've got to get beyond you. Now, here in a passage of Scripture, probably one of the most misunderstood and misapplied Scriptures in the Bible. Not many people misunderstand this one. Jesus wept. It's kind of hard to misunderstand that one. Everybody say, Jesus wept. Look at the person beside you and say, I get it. He cried. He cried. But now here's a scripture that has been so misapplied and misunderstood, it just sometimes just kind of blows my mind. So let's just look at this. God speaking to Paul. Now, let's back up two verses. Would you please back up to verse number seven? Uh, you want to go back up to six? We can put it in context. Even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool because I would be speaking the truth. Uh Uh-oh. You know, you speak the truth. What is truth? That's what Pilate said. Jesus standing there, he said, what is truth? Jesus is truth. The Word of God is true. It's infallible. It's impeccable. It's indestructible. It's eternal. The Word of God is truth. Jesus said, Father, sanctify them by thy truth. Thy Word is truth. He said, even if I become, because I'd be speaking the truth. He said, though I, though, even if I choose to boast, he said, I'm not choosing to, but I'm just telling you the facts. And when I tell you the facts, some of you are going to think I'm boasting. They thought Joseph was boasting. They thought he was arrogant. All he did was communicate what God had showed him. And they hated him for it. Matter of fact, it says they hated him even more. You know why they hated him more? You know why they hated him more? Because they already hated him once. <laughs> they already hated him a little. There are some people who don't like you. They don't even know why they don't like you. They just don't like you. And if you begin to share the Word of God, the truth of God, they're going to hate you more. Everybody say, that's okay. All right, because why? Because haters are going to hate. They can't help it. Even if I should choose to boast, I would uh, would not be a fool because I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain. Everybody say, I refrain. Uh, That means everybody don't need a piece of your mind. Raise your right hand. Say, they don't need a piece of my mind. I need every piece I got. All right. But I refrain so that no one will think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say. Now, Paul also writes in Romans chapter 12 that we should not think more highly of ourselves than we should. So maybe we just add we shouldn't think more lowly of ourselves than God says. All right. You start talking about you the way God talks about you, and people are going to think you're boasting and that you need to refrain. I'm going to say what God says. You know why? Because God's smarter than you. I'm going there. He's smarter than me. Everybody say amen. Amen. Y'all just said that just a little too eager. All right. But I refrain so that no one will think of me more than is warranted by what I say or do. Look at verse number 7. Or because of these surpassingly great revelations. Woo! Paul's got some revelations. How many of y'all want some revelations? You know, you know where faith comes from? Rhema. From a revelation of God. If you have any faith, it's because God's revealed something to you. And, and because God reveals things to you, uh, sometimes you're going to come under attack. Because people say, oh, you think you know everything? No, I don't know everything. I just know where everything is. Our Father knows everything. All right. Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, there's an old high school word right there. Oh, you're so conceited. I grew up in Jonesboro, quit growing at a very early age. And when I was at Annie Camp Junior High School in the ninth grade, first time around, I played football, ran track. And I was just one of the guys, just one of the other, just another one of the students there at Annie Camp Junior High School. And there wasn't anything special about me. I just, you know, had a nose, you know, had a nose. Uh huh, I had a nose. How many of you knows what I'm talking about? And uh, it just kind of grows on you, you know what I'm saying? And I was just one of the guys. I was just one of the players. I was just one of the track guys. And uh, I was just one of the guys. I wasn't particularly popular. I wasn't particularly unpopular. I was just one of the guys. But, you know, I didn't do real well that year in school. I had two morning paper routes, one in the afternoon, played football, ran track. And I did not pass English. Hence, I ain't going to say anything else. 
So uh, we moved. My mother and dad went through a divorce, so we moved in the Methodist Children's Home. And I went to Westside Junior High School, which used to be down by the old Emmanuel Baptist Church, down by the Children's Hospital, down by Little Rock Central High School. I went to Westside. And I went in with my mommy to register for the ninth grade all over again. And before I could hardly get registered, before school ever started, I was talking to a friend of mine named John Bain. And John came up to me one day, and he wasn't a friend at the time. And uh, he said, hey, everybody at school's talking about you. What? Me? See, I was the new face in the crowd. I was the new student. Same guy that played football, ran track, had paper routes, and who was just another guy. But somehow, because I was new in the crowd, everybody was talking about me, mostly the girls. I wasn't saved, you know what I'm saying? And uh, so they were talking about me. John said, oh, everybody's talking about you. Now, here's what was confusing to my mind. This was confusing to me. I was the same guy. I was the same guy that moved from Andy Camp, whose parents went through a divorce. I'm living in the Methodist Children's Home. Now I'm in a new school. And everybody's talking about me in a real positive way. And I asked a friend of mine, Jerry Sullenberger, on the school bus. I said, Jerry, this is kind of weird. Everybody's talking about me. They're talking about how cool I am and stuff. I'm the same guy. He said, don't ever lose that. He said, Perry, don't be moved what people think about you. Listen to me. Don't be moved what people think about you. Think about you what God thinks about you. See, I was the same guy. I was the same guy that wore those old snub, snub, uh, snub-nosed cowboy boots, walked in hog manure, lived on a hog farm. I was the same guy. What happened? Well, we relocated to a new city, and I'm a new guy, and suddenly everybody's talking about me as if I'm somebody. Listen, I was the same guy that grew up on a hog farm. The only difference was I was new. Listen, don't be moved what people think about you. And Jerry said, Perry, don't let that change you. You know what happens to too many Christians? We know we were lost. We get saved, and we think we're better than everybody else. Listen, it's okay to say what God thinks about you, but it's never okay to become conceited. Now, here's the problem. If you have a dream like Joseph, some people are going to think you're conceited because sometimes with our great zeal and passion, we, we don't refrain. We get so passionate that we begin to share this great dream, and people don't know how to process that, you, with that because they still see you as that little boy with the overall standing in hog manure petting a pig. But see, you have to see yourself, Christ in you, and you in Christ. You have to begin to see yourself that you're recreated in Christ Jesus unto good works. And you're not the same person anymore. You once were lost, but now you're saved. And you want to walk in the revelation of who Jesus is and who you are in Christ. And Paul says, therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in the flesh. Now, if you want to read your Bible, which is always encouraged here at Family Church, the thorn in the flesh, you know what the great commentary on the Bible is not Matthew Henry? It's the Word of God. The great commentary on the Bible is the Bible. So let's see what is a thorn in the flesh. Oh, it's right here. I didn't even have to go to my commentary. I didn't even have to paraphrase it. All I had to do was notice this comma that was added. The comma's not even there in the original text. It's kind of there so we can take a breath and finish the sentence. It was added by the interpreter. I was given a thorn in the flesh. What is the thorn in the flesh? Y'all did not read that. Y'all are thinking. Let's say it out loud. The thorn in the flesh is? Hmm. Well, now, since we've decided, based on the Word of God, what the thorn is, that therefore we know what it's not. It's a messenger of Satan. The word messenger in the original text is angelos. That's where we get our word angel. It's a fallen angel of Satan who has been sent to buffet Paul, to stop Paul, to thwart Paul from fulfilling the will of God. And you know how he does that? He stirs up the brethren and the cisterns. He stirs everything up. Everywhere Paul went, people attacked him. Paul said, man, I'm attacked by my countrymen. I'm attacked by foreigners. Everywhere I go, I've been shipwrecked. I've been attacked. I've been beaten. I've been left for dead. I've been stoned and drug out of town. How many of you ever been stoned? Come on, I see some sinners in here. Different kind of rocks. Well, I was given a thorn in the flesh. So what is a thorn in the flesh? 
Too many times we've been told in church and in our curriculum what the thorn is rather than going with the Bible. The thorn in the flesh, it tells us specifically what it is. It is a messenger of Satan. Next verse. So everything that you've ever learned about the thorn, you need to get out of your head because your head will ruin your thoughts. Let me tell you how it works. When you're lost, anybody ever been lost in here? Anybody? I, I don't mean physically lost. I was lost in Dallas twice, and I lived there. You know, in Dallas, you get lost, you miss a turn. You know, like you're like 42 miles and get back where you was. How many of you were ever lost in sin? Here's, I want you to understand what happened is you were lost in your sin. Your spirit man was dead unto God. Through Adam, sin entered. You were born by nature with a sin nature. By birth, by genetics, you were a sinner. You have a sin nature. Your mind and your body has been in charge of your life. And your body likes to feel good, doesn't it? Oh, that feels so good. Oh, you know. And, and your mind is used to telling you what to do. How many of your brain never tells you stuff? Y'all raise your hand? That's because your brain sent a signal. Some of you said, my signal, I ain't raising my hand. Now, so your brain has been in charge, and it's been responding to what feels good, what tastes good. Everybody say, pie. Mmm, pudding. Ah, bananas. Mmm. <laughs> your, <laughs> your, brain, your brain and your body have been talking back and forth, communicating. You touch something, oh, that's hot. Oh, that feels good. How could anything feel so good be so wrong? Because it's sin, dipstick. So, <laughs> sin, you know how you spell sin? F-U-N, it feels good. It just kills you. The pleasures of Egypt will destroy your life. I didn't mean to call you a dipstick. Really, all a dipstick is one of them things you pull it down and check your oil, you know what I'm saying? All right. So Paul says, I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. And the Lord says, no, I'm not going to let you become conceited. I'm going to allow this buffeting to take place. Well, how come all these things get happening to me? Because God says, you've been given authority over this. But here's what I want you to understand. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. See, the problem is, as long as you're still operating in you, you're not operating in him. See, what we do, we try to use our strength, our ability, we try to use our intellect, we try to use every natural gifting that we have and hope and pray that God uses us. Now, he doesn't mind using that, but see, when you rely on you rather than on him, it's very, very limited. In 2001, simultaneously, we broke ground at Second Chance Youth Ranch to build a ranch for at-risk young people, and simultaneously, driving down the road, the Lord laid it on our heart, spoke to me very clearly in my heart, and said, start Arkansas Christian Academy. Back then, we called it Family Church Academy. And I realized that I was incapable. I was incapable physically, intellectually incapable of running and operating and administrating a youth ranch. Bing, 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 bing. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. And at the same time, we start Arkansas Christian Academy with a word from God. And I realized I was weak, incapable, the least likely person to be asked or told to start a school, much less a school and a ranch simultaneously. But in my weakness, I have found strength and ability because I recognize I, Perry David Black, cannot do what God's called me to do without God's supernatural dispensing of the Spirit of the living God. Therefore, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The weakness is in my weakness. I come to the realization I cannot do anything apart from God, nor do I want to. So I'll boast about my weakness, so I'm here to tell you today. You think I'm all that in a bag of chips? I ain't even the bag. What I do know is greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world, and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I have the mind of Christ, and I have been given everything that pertains to life and godliness, and therefore get out the way because Perry's coming through. Amen. 
Now, what is my point? We've been told that all this, that this Angelos, this messenger of Satan, is everything but what it is. It's a devil. And everywhere Paul went, you know what the devil did? Everywhere he went, he stirred people up. You know what? You just might as well figure out, if you hadn't already figured this out, this is going to help you understand. The reason people don't like you is because they don't like you. Just go up to them tomorrow and say, what is it about me you don't like? And they'll go, because you think you're better than me. That's, I mean, that's the best they got. Listen, we're not better than anybody, but I'm here to tell you, Perry Black's way better in Jesus than he was before Jesus, and he now has a destination and an eternal, secure place in glory. So you know what? If you don't like me, yeah, well, you have to take it up with my boss. She's right here on front row, four foot ten and a half. Come on. But, you know, here's the thing. When we think it's about us, here's the reality. It's not about you. God uses and chooses to use the least likely. Now, how does that work? Well, as long as you think you've got to have the strength and ability that you've got to do it in your own intellect, your own, so that somehow you have to make all these man-made qualifications, then you're always going to come up short. The beauty of what happened to me in 2001, now I was born again in 1972, so it took a long time for me to get there. As I came to realization that this dream from heaven, like Joseph had a dream from God, that in order for this dream to be a living reality, I had to realize I can't do it apart from God. And in that moment of recognizing my inability, His ability came flooding into my life. Hence, this passion, this purpose. And sometimes I don't refrain it and it blows people's minds and they think it's conceit. It is not conceit. It is based in the seat, seated in Christ Jesus at the right hand of my heavenly Father where I can do all things in Him I live and move and have my being. And so do you. Oh, wow. How's that work in our life? So let me ask you some deep, some deep prodding questions right here at 15 minutes to 12. 15 minutes to sandwiches. Mm. You ready for deep prodding questions? Have you ever felt like you have failed too bad to ever be used by God? If anybody is disqualified because of sin, it'd be Perry Black. Paul said, I'm the chief among sinners. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tonto. <laughs> Have you ever felt like you failed too bad to ever be used by God? Yes, on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday, on Friday, on Sabbath, on Sunday, first day of the week. Have I ever failed? Yeah, but see, I don't fail near as much. I don't fail near as often. Perfect in Christ, perfect in walk. Nope. But listen. I am fleeing those youthful lusts, and I am pursuing Jesus. But if I want to live in my past, my past will hold me down. That's why Paul said to the church in Hebrews, he said, throw off every weight. Throw off every weight. Throw off every weight. Throw off every sin that does so easy to beset you. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher. Come on. He's the author and the finisher. He's got this. Say that with me. Jesus, he's got this. He's got you in the palm of his hand. Well, wow, glory to God. Listen, you may not get a rebate for not having a wreck every six months, but I'm here to tell you, God's going to bless you. He's got bigger hands, better hands than all state. <laughs> you have to watch TV to keep up with anything relevant that I preach around here. Have you ever felt like you just didn't have what it takes to win in life? You just feel like the harder you try, the bigger you fail? Keep getting up. Don't ever stay down. Have you ever thought someone else was more qualified than you? Every day. I, I'm serious now. I've been doing this for over 40 years, and there are many days of my life I just say, you know what, I'd like to tag somebody today. Yeah, you ever felt like that? Billy, you ever feel like that out there? I just, don't tag me. I'm already busy. I done tagged you. You got to tag downstream, not back upstream. I done tagged you. Second Chance Ranch, Clint, uh, Daily Operations Director, they are running Second Chance Ranch, doing a phenomenal job. I said, tag, you're it. Praise God. Come on. 
Listen, you got to hand this baby off. It's like a relay, man. You got to hand off the baton and say, go, go, go. You got this, man. You know, you just can't do it all. I am not qualified except I'm called. And if you're called, he anoints who he calls. He equips who he calls. And he qualifies who he calls. He's called you. He's got a plan and purpose for your life. You have what it takes because Jesus done got this. Come on. Have you ever thought somebody else was more qualified? Uh Uh-huh, this morning I got up and I went, why me, Jesus? You know, what have I ever done to deserve even one? Chris Christofferson, 1970. Have you ever thought somebody else was more qualified? Yeah, just about every day of the week. But see, he qualifies who he calls. He equips who he calls. So let's look at Moses. Oh, Moses. Moses. Exodus 3, Moses. Just tending the sheep. Now remember, Moses was raised up in Egypt, raised in Pharaoh's house. Moses was raised to be a mighty warrior in the world. Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side. That far side, those are some funny cartoons. Y'all know those? Google it. To the far side of the wilderness. He wasn't just on the edge of the wilderness. He wasn't just like almost in town. He was on the far side. You ever felt like you was on the far? You ever feel like you was on? I, that terrible English took English two times. Still can't get it right. He was on the far side of the wilderness. He was so far out there. He had, he had to, it took him a day or two just to come to the edge of town. And he came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And he's just minding. He's just taking care of sheep. You know what God's doing? He spent 40 years in Egypt. He's now on the far side of the wilderness. He doesn't have the royal stamp. He doesn't have the, the royal steed. He doesn't have the royal chariot. He doesn't have the, war, warrior, uh, the, the royal robe. He's just Moses out there taking care of sheep. All of a sudden, whoa, this, this bush catches on fire. Whoa! Moses goes, wow, that's pretty cool. He walks over there, and God starts talking to him. He says, Moses. That's how God talks. He says, Moses. Moses. He says, Abra, Abra. Yes, sir. Says, Take off your shoes, the ground you're standing on. Let's go to chapter 4. He's now talking to God. God says, Moses, here, what I want you to do? I want you to go down to town. Everybody say, go down to town. Oh, Ruby, you got to take your love to town. Uh-huh. I done went to preaching. Who was that? I don't know if that, is that a vulgar song? Oh. Okay, Ruby, don't go to town. Stay out on the far side of the wilderness, Ruby. That's why you got to have your mind renewed. Just stuff running around in there all the time. <laughs> and he, says, he says, Moses, take off your shoes where you're standing. is holy ground. And Moses is like, wow, this is cool. This bush is on fire, but it's not being consumed. That's the fire of God. The fire in you is greater than the fires around you. Don't you ever forget that. Hi, this is Perry Black, and I want to let all of our viewers know that all of my messages are free, and you can download those at FamilyChurchBryant.org, and I'll see you next week right here on BTN, your Arkansas Christian Connection.